I think I've done a number of works which represent a threat to the eye. One of the reasons they're powerful and effective is that they present a danger to our relationship to the seen world. I think that in a culture based on imagery and the collision of looking and being, the collision of narcissism and voyeurism, the eye is the major player. So a threat to that eye is a threat to what it means to live another day. I'd like to think that photography is not an isolated discipline. Photography is something that connects us all, connects us all with the world around us, with where everything around us, technology, science, all the many different art forms, media. And so in a world where everything is connected, I decided to work on a video about one of my favorite artists, but also someone who has deeply influenced the way I see the world, the way I perceive things and the way I take the world. And I guess that this all influences my photography because photography is a way of connecting with the world. And so today's video is one for the mind and hopefully it'll function as well as a threat to the eye, meaning it can inspire, change or shapeshift something that we will see. And so I guess that without further ado, let's just go straight into another video. And today's subject is the amazing art of Barbara Kruger. Barbara Kruger, a native from New Jersey, attended the Syracuse University and the Parsons School of Design for some time in the 1960s, but ended up dropping out due to financial difficulties. And these experiences made Barbara want to gain her own independence and establish herself whilst pursuing a career as a graphic designer. And while she started as a freelancer working in various different projects, from editing images to book and magazine covers, she soon got a job with Condé Nast Publications, working for Mademoiselle magazine doing page design. And during this period, graphic design was mostly done by hand, either by techniques of superimposition or collage, which borrowed ideas from the Dada movement from prior decades. And as Barbara pointed out, in those days, everything was cut and paste. And I would do a page design involving type and sometimes images. My job as a designer morphed into my work as an artist with big differences on the level of meaning. And her earlier works date back to 1969, where she began creating pieces that incorporated various materials such as feathers or ribbons. And these objects went from being perceived as erotically suggestive to being seen as representatives of a feminist movement. In 1976, after a long period of working for Condé Nast, Barbara moved into teaching which led her to the Berkeley University in California, where while immersing herself into literature, photography and poetry, she began incorporating found images into her work and mixed them with words and sentences that were thought provocative and had a clear intention to connect with the viewer. And all this work rose to popularity around 1981, where she debuted her now widely recognized style at an exhibition titled Public Address. And this exhibition featured the style many have recognized being influenced by earlier artists such as Alexander Hotchenko. And this style can be described by the use of found images of celebrities or events juxtaposed with words in white ball futura font, which were usually inside red boxes. 
The artist also talks about the importance of looking at her own images and recognizing what areas of the image are most productive and important for the meaning she wants to make. I think it's important to keep in mind what areas in the image are most productive and most important for the meaning that I want to make. And I arrange the text and other elements so that they don't obscure those points of meaning. And so transporting this to our photography, of course, we talk about composition. And so composition is something that has to do necessarily with lines and perspectives, if we talk on a formal level, of course. But I believe what we can see in this specific context is the idea of composing with meaning. And so I think if I want to give you an example, I want to pop on a screen this image right here. This image right here was featured in a few videos ago. And to create this image, I had in mind what Barbara had said. And so the idea of composing with meaning, especially if we have the opportunity and the time and to stage and to prepare our shots, it has to do with the idea of identifying points of interest and possible, I would say, um, points that can I highlight the ideas that we have, the, the meaning, the, the sort of like mood that we want to create. Of course, this can be done with other types of photography, not necessarily shots that can be staged. It can be done with street photography, etc, etc. But I think it's really, really important to grasp this concept of identifying in an image that we want to create or capture the points of interest, the points of meaning and rearrange what is in there. Say, if we think about this image that I've just showed you, if I had put the subject in the center of the photo, it would probably be different because in here we have the idea of contemplation, which is given by the subject, which stands on a corner of the photo. And then we have, of course, the reflection. And I think the fact that we have the space, the open space, gives that idea of timelessness, dreamy. To me, this is the way I arrange elements in order to create or to sort of like pass a meaning or an idea to you, the viewer. And so this is how looking at Barbara's work or even other artists that are not necessarily photographers can be helpful. And yeah, I guess this is a good valuable lesson. And there are two other aspects that I would like to touch when talking about Barbara's work. The first one would be the broadening of the mind, meaning the openness of mind, and then the second one, which has to do with direct address. And talking about Barbara's work is talking about a work that, in my opinion, falls in the realm of pop and conceptual art, in the sense that it uses techniques drawn from mass communication channels and advertising to explore real issues, such as identity, love, connection, social stance, gender, etc. And so by looking at her work, we are advised to keep an open mind, to endlessly question ourselves and everything around us, to experiment more, to define, to challenge the rules or redefine rules and convey methods. And I believe this is absolutely important whenever we are creating something new. And one of the most important aspects of her work, if not the most pivotal one, is the direct address, which she describes as being the motor of my practice from the very beginning. Whether it appears through the gaze of an image looking back at you, or whether it is a text forthrightly addressing you. It's something that comes out of magazine work. You're addressing a reader, but also if you grew up with television, or certainly online life and YouTube, you are addressing the camera. Many people are. And now with Instagram and selfie culture, it's so much about that, that it all became a collision between narcissism and voyeurism. And so it's really interesting to see this um, quote and put it into perspective and kind of like imagine what we're doing right now as possibly being part of the spectrum of narcissism, me and voyeurism, you. Although I'd like to think it's different because we are talking about someone else's work and we are putting really, really important ideas on a table that can lead to both of our growths. And so we've reached the end of the video here and I wanted to kind of like go back to the beginning of how I thought about this video and 
something that I wrote when I was just, you know, looking for a structure for this video. And I wrote something along the lines of don't shop for the dreams being sold to you, shop for your own dreams. And I think it's really important because we're constantly being fed through algorithms or feeds or whatever it is through other people, not just us. We're constantly being influenced to buy things that we don't need, to buy um, cameras that we don't need, to buy this or that or get into this or that because other people are doing it, because it's a circle of influence. And so I think it's really healthy to take a step back and to focus on what we really want and really sit sometimes with a certain thought or a certain idea you know, of buying something or doing something or experimenting with a new project and see if that's really for us, if that really fits us or if it's not, again, something temporary that we saw somewhere we were momentarily enchanted by. And so, yeah, I guess that um, it's been all for today. I'll be linking down below, as usual, information about the artist, Barbara Kruger, um, you know, stuff that you can do to help support her work. And yeah, I guess it's been, you know, a pleasure. And uh, I hope I'll see you here for another video very soon. So stay safe, keep shooting film, peace.